information that's just littered that's, the internet. And yep. you know, we talk about the power of technology, and yep. sometimes it's in the wrong hands, and the misinformation yep. <clears throat> is being, I guess, transmitted as frequently as the actual fucking information. And it's yeah, just it's true. it drives me crazy. Yeah, it's true. The problem you have, and to me it's not a problem, but the situation is that you cannot stop progress, right? Would you guys go back to 2G? I launched 2G for Sony. We had Sony Mobile, um, that, uh, and, and at the time we went from 1G, which was the analog one, to 2G, which was a digital one. And people were like, oh, we're going to get brain cancer. We get, I heard it all. I launched after that the 3G and 4G. So 5G is the only one that was not involved with Sony anymore. Um, but I've, I've heard it all. I mean, like even 4G was even the worst. And now 5G, you're getting all this. So they're not talking about cancer anymore, about 5G, because it's low band and all this. So I guess people have, have understood that it's not about uh, health too much. But COVID came at the same time as 5G. So all these people who think that COVID comes from evil, they believe 5G helps COVID to, you know, to go and faster and, and to more yeah. people, too many it really more people. It makes sense. Yeah, it, it would. The yeah. My, read my I'm book just, and you'll see yeah. it doesn't make sense. No. See, what also doesn't make sense is the dumb fuckers that are listening and reading this are doing it from their tablets and their phones, sure. which, if anything, that's where the American government is tracking us. Like, I don't have anything to hide. I broadcast my drug use and alcohol on social media. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, but at the same time, we're not doing anything. I'm not a part of some, like, like, crazy all left or right. Yeah. I'm not, you know, doing anything illegal to the point where I'm concerned about it. But the everyday American, or in this case, you know, French Europeans, or French, European, yeah. you know, it seems we're all in the same boat. Of There's some stupid folks that are rowing the opposite direction of yeah. society, trying to block progress yeah. in mm -hmm. the positive way. Exactly. So, so in your book, are you also just kind of uh, posting like uh, – instead of being afraid of change that will come with technology, kind of look for the ways technology can enhance our lives. That's exactly it. That's exactly the spirit of the book. See, I didn't even read that thing. Cliff Notes. Yeah, see, and you thought you thought we were smart. We're a Cliff Note crew over here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, no, I, no, but I, and that, that's, that's, that's probably a hard bridge to gap. Uh, a hard gap to bridge. Yeah, how Set it backwards there. <laughs> right when we looked but, smart. I know. You went right back. I got to bring us back. Would you go back 10 years ago? Like, look. Oh, I, hell I, no. I, I traveled, hell no. I traveled from France, right? I don't even have a computer with me. I'm, I'm very involved in social networks. I'm, I'm doing some campaigns for, for some companies in France right now from from my cell phone. Yeah. Right? Same thing. I mean, I mean, so easy today. I wanted to see where you guys were. You know, I didn't have to look at a map anymore. Obviously, GPS is even something from the past. That's but you. when I launched GPS, it was people just could not believe that suddenly you could get help. That was the worst thing in 1994, you know, going from one place to the other. I lived in London. I just moved to London. I didn't know London. And map going quest. from one place to the other was terrible. It was very hard. But that suddenly you just enter where, you, where you're going. The GPS knows where you are. And that's it. Turn right, turn left, and you arrive. That's what I did today. It's the first time I drove in Denver. It took me like from Westminster. It took me like half an hour. It's just like. So hold on, though. Hey, thanks for coming down. I appreciate you driving down. Yeah. Andy brought fantastic. One. I just can't. I'm so smitten. I love you to death. Like you are. I'm, he's a no nonsense straight shooter, and he's a great guy. I fucking love today's episode. Thank you. Yeah, you are awesome. Go ahead, Chris. I just interrupted him. I wanted to fluff you up a little bit. Oh no, no, Thanks no. For we were all about fluff. Yeah. Um, no, I couldn't. I couldn't get like. Uh, so, fuck! I lost my train of thought. I do. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. It's all good. Um, no. So, okay. So, what are you? What are you hoping to reach with this book? Like, are you? I mean, did you get good feedback from your friends who were like? I got feedback on Amazon. You, you. Well, it's all written in French because. I launched the uh, French version back in April, and I started to sell quite a lot. On this one, two days after uh, selling it, I got uh, – so this one is the English version. Uh, Good, I, was I can't in the top French. In the top ten. Uh, My French is very th There's broken. a big platform com called Thinkers360, which is about thought leaders and influencers. And all of us basically write books. And in two days, uh, based on Amazon ranking, I was in the top ten of sales of the books. Hell yeah! Yeah, two days. I mean, it's like uh, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you'll see it. 
uh, on my when LinkedIn you sent me your LinkedIn, I was tickled. I was like, I looked at it and I was like, holy fuck, this guy has <laughs> done a lot. But I mean, it's like but I didn't realize <laughs> he was like, check out my LinkedIn. Like most of the time, I send people our Instagram page yeah. or whatever. But when you send that, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> this guy's like a five star general of technology. <laughs> but yeah, so so it's uh, you know, it was very successful in France because I think people, as you say, you know, they are they have a lot of misinformation. And they try always to look for something that's going to reassure them. And I didn't want to reassure them for the fact of reassuring them. I wanted to give them, you know, facts and explanations of why they shouldn't be worried about new technologies. And in any case, why worry when, you know, the train has left the station? Sorry to say, but new technology, we started back in the 60s, you know. Right. Artificial intelligence was invented. The term was invented in, in the U.S. Dartmouth University back in 1950. Right, so we we knew we were robots. I mean, we've seen a lot of movies about robots and everything. You knew what's coming. Look, Back to the Future and that flying hover. Yeah. You know, Why don't we have a hoverboard yet, Nick? Well, well, we do. The guy has already crossed the channel between France and 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 Why are the they UK. in Walmart? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're gonna come. But we have the technology today. Drones have made that possible because now you have cars that can fly. You have taxis, and there's a whole chapter in my book about taxis that fly. You know, because it's it's uh, sorry, it's a drone technology with a propeller, and you you can do anything you want today. The technology is just fantastic. 5G healthcare. You have somebody sick in Australia and a specialist doctor in New York because you have no latency with 5G. The the surgeon in New York can operate on a very small brain tumor in Australia. Like without, I mean, with the team obviously next to the patient in case something happens. But the, the, the surgeon that has that specialty, he can just do it because 5G allows with more bandwidth and no latency, which, which means that basically as soon as you, you hit, you know, the joystick on the other side of the world, it moves at the same time. And so, I mean, it's and you're right, it has been there, not to that extent, but like 10 years ago, I was working at a urology's office a urologist's office, yeah. and we were using the, the Da Vinci, and it was literally, yeah, it was it. shooting two spikes on the inside of you, and it was literally like sucking out parts of like tumors and yeah. such, and the, it was minimal, inv- it was not invasive because they were using just two stakes, and yeah. these are things, and it was like sucking well, Da Vinci two, now is made so, is, I mean, is, I can is, only imagine. The top, top one, and it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, cannabis so. is the same way, yeah. as has wine, yeah. you know, yeah. like yeah. technology is helped us yep. progress as a society. But again, you can't stop the train. Yeah. That's, that's my point. So rather than stopping the train, embrace it and, and, and know about the facts. So at least, you know, you know what you want to see. You don't, you know what you don't want to see. And that, that's what so, will work. So when do you think 5G will be like global? Well, and 5G we got to talk almost. about aliens too. We're not there yet, but we're going to. He, he talked about drones. I'm bringing up aliens. Five uh, G is already global. I mean, in France we have five G. You have five G in, in in the US. You have five G in Japan. I feel like I'm five, not getting five I mean, G. You not? You don't get it in Rhino. I can tell you that. The, oh, na- really? the neighborhood in the Westminster. My my sister yeah. knows she has five G. You can get it. Yeah. 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 In AT- China, you have towns where where Huawei basically is located, the headquarters of Huawei. The whole town is 100 percent five G. So you have automatic cars, autonomous, and auto, I mean, basically, you, you, taxis don't have drivers anymore. That's it's like the like, Chinese Google for those, and it also exactly. does like uh, WhatsApp, and it does. Yeah, it's it like does a one-stop hub yeah. for everything. Autonomous like, cars. That's because, thanks to 5G. So no drivers, uh, and it's and you, you don't have accidents anymore because it's all based on sensors. Uh, the, the, the the strategy behind it because it, we, they had to think about a lot of things, and I, I went and visit them. It was actually really impressive. Like, for example, if you have a, uh, uh, an older person crossing and a younger kid crossing, how, how does the car Time. choose? Yeah, will he choose the older person or the younger person? Oh, to hit. Yeah, yeah to hit. I mean, you know, older if person. he can't stop, for example. Yeah, but, you know, all these things needed to, to be thought through. Uh, and and who is going to be responsible for the accident? Because, obviously, there's no you. driver. Well, will it be the guy who programs it? Will it be... The manufacturer of the car, would it be? So what about there, the jaywalker? There are a lot of things. Exactly. What it about makes jaywalker? jaywalking a lot scarier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't fucking do it. Yeah, New well, York just got a little Well, here. you have sensors, <laughs> so they'll be able to see, to see you very quickly. But, I mean, all these, we had to think through. And you have towns now, you know, with, I don't know how many, 10, 20 million people living in there. Because, obviously, China, they have a lot of people. Uh, and these towns, <laughs> the these towns, they are full 100% 5G. So, uh, you know... And again, 
I have bad news for everyone. It's, we're already working on 6G and 7G. <laughs> so I don't even know what that let, means. So. It just means faster. Let's, it means my porn let's stop worrying about with things. no glitches is exactly. what I just heard. Exactly. And you download a movie. I mean, would you go back to VHS tape to watch your movies? Uh, I wouldn't. I have no. Blu-ray. Okay, so but here's I, a question that I think yeah. – uh, I mean, yeah, we're not watching HD uh, or what was it? Movies Blu-ray? That were, Blu-ray, that's it. Yeah, but that's like, Sony. <laughs> Sony technology. Yeah. <laughs> We were watching laser discs. Yeah, <laughs> this guy is just so inventive. How how far are we from having just like Wi-Fi when we walk outside where we don't pay for internet anymore? Like, why is it not surrounding us everywhere? Why well, is you it have not always today? Home? Berlin, for example, you can walk anywhere. You have Berlin Wi-Fi, and uh, you go from hotspot to hotspot, and it's free. Yeah, so hotspot to hotspot. But well, like, what about I just, in your house? Yeah, do you pay like, for internet. Yeah, I mean, again, that. It, it's not a technology issue. It's an economical issue, yeah, right? It's yeah, greed, so capitalism. That's exactly the problem. <laughs> so okay. that, that I can't answer. I mean, I'm t- the technology is there. It exists. Again, I was in Bilbao uh, last week. and uh, Last week around. you were in Dubai? And then no, this week Bilbao. You're... Sorry, oh, in Spain. Bilbao. Oh, I, 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 uh, Northern yeah. Spain. <laughs> exactly, oh. uh, which is about two hours away from, from Bordeaux. And, uh, and you, know, oh. you, you walk around town, and you have Wi-Fi all the time for free. Uh, so is it speedy? It's speedy. Yeah, very speedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, when yeah. I was looking to move pre-COVID, yeah. I was trying to move. I was going to just do like 90 days in Lisbon because it's they have yeah. that same situation. True. It's very tech heavy, yep. and I w- it was only five hours ahead of New York, so I was yep. going to be able to juggle that with where yep. my office is. And I was just like, holy shit! Everywhere you walk around, you just have free internet. Yep. That's fucking fantastic. Yep. Why don't we have that? So so. Side side tr- side question of that. Uh, what advice do you have if an American wants to live in France? How do we go about doing that? <laughs> um, this is very much on my radar. <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, like for example, if you if any American wants to live in Bordeaux, we have uh, my wife was president of a of an association called Bordeaux Women's Club. So we're all the English speaking uh, people. So we have about three hundred families that belong to that club, and they help you with everything: finding a house. Healthcare, um, finding a school for your kids, and all this. So, I know it exists all around France. So, anybody who wants to move to Paris or whatever, you either you're part of a church and you can look at the American Cathedral in uh, in Paris, uh, or uh, and 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 they will help. You know, and that's the beauty of English-speaking people abroad. They really want to help uh, always. Uh, and that, that that that's why it's 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 very easy, honestly. The worst part is getting a visa. Yeah. That that that's it. But if you're you know if you have a startup or you have a good idea or if you if you uh, uh, if you have a good. <laughs> we have a Sorry. startup and a good idea, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're well, on it. Yeah. Well, in that case, I, I think you know uh, the French government Junk. will will help you out. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> the dog just got up in his lap asking for pets. <laughs> And I love dogs, so I don't have any problems with that. You're a cutie. (laughs) Okay, so we do ask a couple questions to all of our guests towards the end of the episode. And you've been an unbelievably great sport, (laughs) but you're not out of the woods yet. So you might want to pour yourself a little bit more wine, and I can go get us some more. Uh, I have enough. I'll leave you the rest. (laughs) Well, these next questions, we're going to start with aliens and are, have you been able to use any of the technology that we have harnessed from the aliens? Like we hear on Joe Rogan's podcast no. with those scientists. You seem to be very forward thinking. <laughs> what do you know that we don't about aliens? I don't know much. You're lying. <laughs> you don't know much. You know something? Yeah, that report, hey, that report the release didn't, I, yeah, tell that's what I was gonna say. didn't tell a shit. You know what's that's going on. That's the report I was going to mention. You, you, know. were, you were in that report. <laughs> no, I didn't read Harnessing the report. It. I heard about the report, but I haven't read about it. All right, fine. I'll let you slide on that one. Okay, so we have – there's something we didn't mention before we uh, leave, and I know this kind of pivots back to wines. We've been bouncing all over the place. We have been all over the place. But you're a member of a pretty elite group of Correct. people that not only talk about but monitor and invest in you know, in all aspects. Tell us a little bit about this community without yeah. me using French words and butchering it, but let me try first. The Camerere. Commanderie. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us it's a brotherhood, that. basically, of uh, people who uh, know about wine. So it's Commanderie du Bon Temps Médoc et des Graves, which is the, the areas around Bordeaux. 
And uh, in order to get accepted, you have to be submitted to a committee by uh, chateau owners. So my godfather obviously put me forward, and I was uh, elected back back in 2002. We.